So it's my pleasure right now to introduce Dr. Andy Abril, my colleague in the Division of Rheumatology uh, at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, and Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Rheumatology. And uh, Dr. Abril also serves as the uh, Division Chief. He will uh, present uh, a uh, comprehensive review of, uh, and overview of vasculitis, uh, a topic that's near and dear to his heart. Dr. Abril. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Wang, for uh, your introduction. And um, we're going to talk about a, a topic today that is complex, is long, uh, very heterogeneous group of diseases. <clears throat> so we're going to try to give it a very clinical um, approach. And the idea is to uh, give you some tools for you to recognize uh, these disorders and know how to um, recognize them and classify them. I have no disclosures. <laughs> so these are the main objectives to the talk. We're going to talk about general concepts. We're going to talk a little bit about pathophysiology. I'm not going to stay too much on that. The most important part is a clinical presentation and also some uh, pearls about treatment of these conditions. So there's a few um, areas that are common for most of the vasculitic syndromes. One is that these are conditions that um, happen because there's inflammation of blood vessels and the symptoms occur either because of occlusion and ischemia of the tissues or they may also occur because of the systemic inflammatory process that goes along with them. Uh, these conditions could affect different size vessels. In fact, that's important as we're going to see later in the classification and how to recognize these syndromes. They affect different sizes and different types of vessels, so sometimes arteries or veins. And uh, sometimes there are some specific areas or organs that are involved, sometimes just isolated to a specific organ. And the other important part is that all these are uh, immune-mediated processes. So this is a, a uh, scheme of um, the classification uh, criteria or, or classification consensus that took care in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in 2012, and basically divides the um, of the vasculitis depending on what is the predominant size of the vessels affected. Now this is not exclusive. So for instance, when you look at large vessel vasculitis, you see there tachyasus and, and John Saladaritis predominantly affects the aorta and its large branches, but also could affect medium-sized vessels. So this is based on what's the predominant type of vessel that's affected. So therefore, large vessel vasculitis includes tachyasus or 